Welcome back to AFTV uh, in association with Angelotti. And I'm joined now uh, again by an old friend, uh, uh, Stephen Karangizi, who is the uh, 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 head of the uh, director and CEO of uh, ALSF. And uh, Stephen, we've got to stop meeting once a year, right? We, we, we must break the habit, at, le at least break it up, I right? Agree. Six months, maybe. I agree, <laughs> totally agree. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Stephen, always a pleasure to have you in. Uh, um, uh, you know, those of you watching uh, uh, may or may not know what uh, ALSF uh, uh, does, but, uh, but you, you, you uh, afford uh, legal support um, uh, uh, within the sector. Um, and uh, again, we, we will weave in your work during the uh, during the interview. But um, when I was talking to you uh, off air a little bit, and uh, you know, I was saying that for the first time, I'm hearing energy ministers talk about the entire value chain. You know, the, the, the generation sure is a is a key mix. Traction is there. Uh, uh, heaven forbid, some projects are already breaking ground, right? Yes, so that's, so that's right. good. Yeah. Uh, uh, very different to our first conversation, I right, uh, four yeah. years ago. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. But yeah. the, um, but again, uh, the ministers are saying, well, that none of that is any good if yeah. we if we don't get the power uh, yeah. to where it needs to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so we've got generation, we, yeah. we've got transmission and distribution, yeah. and then we've got the off grid conversation because yeah. that sometimes gets things done faster than than Not a traditional right. mix. Yeah. So l if we go through those uh, in order. Yeah. On generation, even though there is traction, yeah. there is still a, a, a sticking ground. There's mm -hmm. still inertia, mm -hmm. uh, as you uh, uh, as you say, in the last mile, yes. uh, and and that's where a lot of your work comes in as well. That's Could you right. just just describe how mm -hmm. you, uh, how mm -hmm. uh, where the inertia is and and how you're helping to push it along a little bit? Yeah. No, thank you very much, and a pleasure always to meet you. Um, I think the whole point about the last mile in terms of generation is that everybody admits that there is no sufficient public capital to invest in generation anymore to meet the growing demand in Africa. So the only alternative is to attract private capital. To attract private capital means concluding credible, stable deals with the private capital. But private capital means they've mobilized it off the market, and they have a short time in which they can invest it. Unfortunately, concluding deals with governments tends to take too long. So we come in at the end by providing the best services possible to the government so that they can negotiate with the private investors to conclude the necessary deals for mm. generation. Mm. We see this in many places. Wherever we have provided the support, it has enabled the parties, that's the governments and the private sector, to conclude the deals faster because they are sure that they are negotiating on a Because that's really, really mm. important because there are investors who say to me and say, look, mm. uh, you know, we have had cases where everything's been, uh, been agreed, okay. but the deal has fallen apart at the last mile yeah. because, uh, you know, uh, people need to understand that mm. investors Mm. You do also need a certain amount of predictability on terms exactly. of deal time scales. Yes, you know? exactly. Otherwise, the money goes off the table. That's the whole challenge. Yeah. And the whole point is that there are different reasons why there is a delay at government level. But everybody recognizes that capacity is one of them. So what we do is provide that capacity to bridge the relations between the two and narrow the issues of contention and conclude the deal as fast as possible. Our experience is that every government appreciates it and enables them to conclude the deals as fast as possible. So, so Stephen, we've mm. talked about this in the past though, yeah. uh, again, and, and uh, uh, you know, more and more, uh, you know, we had the minister for, for mm. Zambia uh, just two interviews ago from you saying mm. that uh, look, increasingly, myself and my colleagues are all saying the same thing. We're mm. converging towards the same objective, having yes. a distributed generation mix, etc., etc., yes. and, uh, and so on. Mm. You, you know, surely we must mm. be close to getting a point where mm. there's also a blueprint for that last mile, so that mm. it doesn't get bogged down. Yeah. You know, you, uh, and, and, and I remember in the last interview, you and I talking about having. Uh, mm. sort of standardization of documents, standardization of things. Mm. Are we no further along that conversation or, or are these uh, deals still 
too unique in each case? No, I don't think they are too unique. I think the, the, the point is that everybody now recognizes that the investor wants a predictable environment and a predictable, um, pre predictable conclusion of the deal. If they can have clear and transparent regulatory regime and documentation that they know they can pick on and conclude the deal and there's a, a competitive environment with the others, it makes it more attractive for them. And uh, the point is that the governments are recognizing that, that, that there has to be a transformation from just having a regulatory framework and implementing that regulatory framework in a way in which there is predictability of what is being offered to the investors. What am I saying? The challenge is sometimes capacity at the regulatory level to ensure that there is consistency in what you are offering the investor. And, and a little, you were saying this off air, right? Yeah. No point writing a regulatory framework exactly. if you can't implement it. Exactly. And, and, and so so, so yeah. you bring those implementation challenges to life because yeah. I hear, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of ministers, uh, yeah. uh, at least publicly to me on yeah. air, yeah. saying that you know we are we are mm. keen to have mm. an independent regulatory environment. Yeah. We're, we're, we're keen to have an independent framework. Yeah, exactly. And we've written it. Yeah. Great, you've yeah, written it. I know. But how yeah. do you in implement it? Okay. Are, are, you, are you able to help with capacity issues I, on that I, side as well? Yeah. yeah. I, I think I can best illustrate it with an example of what we have done in what country. We found the country had a regulatory framework but was having challenges in implementing it. So what we did, we provided them with capacity to develop a toolkit for all the aspects that relate to the regulatory framework. So the toolkit gives illustrations and steps for what should be done in terms of what they should be offering the potential investors, um, the issues that they need to clear, so that once they have this checklist, and of course a standard power purchase agreement that would be on the table and is clear, what will be the tariffs available, what is the range, so once we developed that toolkit, it became so easy for the country now to be able to implement the regulatory framework that they had in place. So we see that very important. And then of course provided capacity to the existing staff of the regulatory authority to be able to use that toolkit to complete the regulatory framework. Now, now Stephen, mm. let, let's mm. stay with regulation for a second. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the reason why I want to stay there is because mm. One of the other uh, uh, narratives that is coming through, which, which doesn't surprise me, I'm yeah. sure it doesn't surprise you either, yeah. is this conversation about off-grid, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, and being able to uh, yeah. uh, uh, facilitate that because yeah. it allows you to get power to the right places, sometimes exactly. a whole lot faster than a transmission line and so yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, but but in off-grid, there there are two challenges as well, aren't there? Yeah. One is you need to extend the regulatory environment to exactly. go in there mm. uh, and you need to safeguard the consumers because mm. in off-grid yeah. more than with the type of conversation that we're talking about yeah. actually the, the agreement is direct with a community potentially and stuff yes. like that mm. so uh, so let me structure the question in a better way for you That's right. you know how do you see the mm. extension of regulation and our yeah. country is already going there yeah. uh, uh, in terms of accommodating this off-grid trend I think the first thing is, um, which is exactly more or less what you started with, there has to be recognition that off-grid has to be treated differently from the traditional generation and then transmission to consumers. Because you are basically trying to reach consumers that probably can't afford the electricity at the commercial rate. So the state has to intervene for development purposes which means creating a different kind of regulatory framework which can still attract investors. And the only way of doing that is having standard documentation for bidding, for offering in terms of what you're investing, 
And then for the off taker, which is the communities, which is different from the traditional one, and which means having standard documentation, usable documentation that can attract uh, the investors. So it comes back to the same documentation I was mentioning, because the challenge remains the gap between having the regulations and transforming them into attracting the investor is always too long and the investors don't wait. So they should be able to pick off the shelf clear, transparent, credible documentation that they know if they pick it up, they will conclude a power purchase agreement within the limits and uh, set in the, in and the, the documentation. And, and, and it's yeah. also uh, increasingly important when yeah. a transaction is happening direct with the com uh, community who, yeah. who, who may not be as sophisticated as a buyer as some of these other people may not have their own legal environment to draw on. Th yeah. th th there needs to be some safety mm. because mm. you said it yourself that mm. even if yes. a deal is done directly with the community, yeah. if it goes wrong, mm. There exactly. is a responsibility from the state, For the state. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the only way to address that is that the states may have to, some of the states have already done it, may have to set up separate regulatory authorities. In states where there's big populations, they've set up separate. They call them rural elect electrification authority. That is important because the issues which arise there are different. How are you going to treat, uh, to treat the, the, the off-taker? Are you going to subsidize it? Uh, what is the period? Uh, how do you avoid disruptions? Completely different issues. So I think my personal advice would be where it is possible, have a different regulatory authority that manages that, which has been done in some countries. And also... Um, and, and is is yeah. that because the issues are just so different? They are and, so and, different. And you need a different mindset on you, dif you need a different mindset, but at the same time, at the end of the day, the investor has to be assured that they will have a return. So those particular issues don't change. And the state has to make sure that they keep, uh, they keep the communities or what supplied with the same energy. So I mean, the, 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 the ultimate objective, which is really the energy, is the same and stability. But the issues, underlying issues, are, are quite different. Perfect. And, and, and I, uh, uh, Stephen, unfortunately, I'm getting signals that we've come to the end of our time, which, is, uh, uh, which always happens to us because I enjoy yeah, I talking to you and, and, and we so rattle through it so quickly. Uh, but thank you again for making the time to be here. Sure. It's a, a pleasure to see you again. And uh, thank you as well for watching.